Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Eichler, and I'm a visiting faculty member from Texas State University. I'm here to talk to you today about selecting a research topic, conceptual frameworks, and theoretical frameworks in your research project. We're going to cover four items today. First, selecting your topic. Second, conceptual and theoretical frameworks. Third, literature reviews. Fourth, I'll cover a brief example. First, in selecting your topic, you should develop a topic that you have interest in because you'll be working with this topic for several months or over the course of a year perhaps. One thing you may want to do is to think about three issues you want to study and turn them into questions. These are things you can discuss with your group, your advisor, or others in your discipline. You should see what other scholars have to say needs more study. Another thing you can do is to replicate an earlier study within what's acceptable in your discipline and your university. When working with a topic, you should always follow the advice of your advisor or supervisor. Select a topic you're passionate about. Select a topic that has relevance for your field. Something that can be applied, as you will be out in the workplace as a, as a practitioner in the future. Be prepared to answer the question, so what? So why is this important? Why is this a compelling issue? Why should we spend the time and money studying this? Do preliminary research before selecting your topic, and choose a topic that's doable, neither too large, nor too small, nor something you won't be able to find a sample on. Moving on to conceptual and theoretical frameworks. First, theoretical framework, or theories, are formulated to explain, predict, and understand phenomena. They challenge what we know and the limits within the limits of our field. The theoretical framework is a structure that holds the theory of a research study. The theoretical framework introduces and describes the theory and explains why the research problem actually exists. Don't be afraid to try theoretical frameworks that have not been widely used within your discipline. Conceptual framework is a visual or written product that explains either graphically or in written form the main things to be studied, key factors, concepts, and variables, and the relationships among them. This is by Miles and Huberman. Conceptual frameworks inform us and the reader what we intend to study. It guides our literature review, provides a tentative theory of the phenomenon under study, and it guides our research design by giving an educated or informed hunch of what's going on. Theoretical and conceptual frameworks are of course strongly related. Theoretical frameworks are something borrowed. They come from the literature. They're a named theory. A conceptual framework, on the other hand, is something new. It's something you create. It's something you create from the theory. Theoretical framework should give a named theory and cite it rather, rather regularly throughout your paper. While the conceptual framework is based on your own theoretical framework and your own creation, it's a creative product based on your view of the situation. In theoretical frameworks, do not force a theory upon a situation. Next, I want to share with you a brief example to demonstrate how conceptual and theoretical frameworks are closely related. Room's expectancy theory refers to level of motivation within organizations. Expectancy, three ideas here. Expectancy refers to the idea that more effort will yield some better performance. Instrumentality refers to the idea that increased performance will yield a valued outcome. And valence refers to the value placed on the outcome. As you can see, there are three factors that are related. Expectancy, instrumentality, and valence. Now this is just a diagram of the theory. As you move forward to the conceptual framework, you'll see we have the exact same thing. Three boxes that are closely related. Expectancy, instrumentality, and valence. Now in the conceptual framework, the actual variables and ideas about each of those are plugged in. This will help you focus your research for the individual situation. The theory, of course, informs the conceptual framework. They're the same shape, each having three items. Moving on to literature reviews. You should always follow your local guidelines. You can review multiple sorts of things, including articles from peer-reviewed journals. There are chapters from edited books, edited academic books, and handbooks. These are much like articles and have similar qualities. They're edited by a peer-reviewed process. There are also academic books, like textbooks, newspapers, news sites, and professional magazines or periodicals. Although these don't quite have the high quality that an article from a peer-reviewed journal has, they are helpful because they show current trends. 
You might think about sources of data that you might review as well, including things like government websites, government statistical abstracts, sources of data like the United Nations website, other sorts of sources of data can help you. Of course, you can also work with theses, dissertations, and white papers. You should try to use the original source material and avoid secondary citation. Always try to find the original source so you can interpret it in the best way and not go through somebody else's interpretation of it. You should review the highest academic quality materials that will be available and make your point. For example, if something's published as a dissertation and also later as an article, go for the article. Go for the peer-reviewed article. It's considered higher academic quality in terms of review. When you're reviewing, remember to continue making your point. How does this literature assist you and your readers in understanding your study? Things you can glean from the literature are not just the findings. You should also look to previous research studies, how others have studied a phenomenon, and what they found. How the theory has been used previously and applied within this setting or similar settings. One of the important things sometimes researchers overlook when they're reviewing literature is how others suggest methods or other future studies should be carried out. Also think about the way they've reviewed the background of their study and what brought them to study the item which they're studying. I want to share with you a tip about Wikipedia. It's a great resource and something I hope you'll actually use. However, you should never cite Wikipedia directly. Wikipedia changes from day to day as the items get edited in Wikipedia. Many of those editors are actually academics themselves. The one thing Wikipedia can tell you if you look carefully within the text, there's tiny little numbers and those refer to sources which you can find at the bottom of the article. Those sources sometimes are linked and can get you directly to a PDF of that journal article, which can be wonderful for your work in reviewing the literature. Again, do not cite Wikipedia directly, but use it to inform your literature review. Today, we've talked about selecting your topic, conceptual and theoretical frameworks, reviewing the literature, and I've shared a brief example with you. I hope these will help you in your research endeavors, whether you're an undergraduate student, graduate student, or faculty member looking to increase your research output. Thank you for listening.